All right, good afternoon. I uh, just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, I have a special guest today, Joe Sacchetti, who's going to tell us about his new book that he's authored. And uh, Joe, I want to just welcome you, number one, and appreciate your time today. And uh, just give us a brief uh, intro about yourself and who you are and uh, how you got here today. Well, thank you, Tony. I am thrilled to be here and uh, I love the good work that you're doing and I, I've been following you for a couple of years now as you know uh, and I, I think that uh, guys like you that have had a galvanizing experience out there in life uh, are doing well to share it with uh, with uh, with other folks and um, people love a good message and uh, to that end uh, I've written this book it's called Guts, Smarts and Love and it's got a little subtitle Living Your Life the Army Ranger Way. Uh, which is a, a good segue to why I'm writing this book, uh, United States Army Ranger, uh, two tours in Iraq, uh, served with uh, some of the finest soldiers uh, in the world. Uh, thank you for over your last... service. Excuse me. Thank uh, you for your service, too. Number thank one. you, Tony. Proudly served. And uh, by the way, I think that's a great, uh, it's just a great uh, environment that we're living in now, where little kids come up to you in a in, a, in an airport and say, thank you for your service. And uh, it, it's, um, it, it shows a, a, a community that we're living in now, I'd say the last 30 or 40 years, it's really, uh, it's really evolved and in a great place. So I love our, our soldiers that are coming back and getting warm receptions and, and so forth. And I'll say this, soldiers today are more trained than they have ever been in, in history. I mean, it's not just spears and, and helmets anymore. I mean, it is, it's cyber warfare and it's unbelievable technology. Mm. Uh, and that's just a common soldier. So then uh, this book talks about elite soldiers, in particular, U.S. Army Rangers. And I was lucky enough to command a, a Ranger unit uh, in Iraq uh, after going to Ranger school. And it's, uh, it's sort of mystical when you hear the U.S. Army Ranger. <laughs> you, you, in your mind, it gets, it gets misty. And you hear a, a, a hum of a helicopter coming over a ridge. And, <laughs> and you, you hear the murmur of gunfire. And, and people love it. And so uh, it's, a real, it's a real experience, and uh, there's so many lessons in it that it's worth sharing, and this is a good time to share those messages. I, so, you know, it's funny. You hear so much about the, the, the Navy SEALs and, and what they're all about, and there have been many books that I've read uh, on the Navy SEALs and, and the training they go into. So I'm real curious about the you know, Army Rangers, obviously, are the elite two of the elite and, and, and just hear the back. I'm anxious to read the book just to hear about the army Rangers and how they train and what they go into too. Well, I, that's great. And uh, let me say that we love our uh, other uh, colleague elite forces. If uh, you know, if most people uh, know that there's, there's Navy seals and then the, the army has uh, three types of elite forces. They have uh, special forces or green berets, they have Delta operators, and then they have Army Rangers. And the difference really is uh, that Delta is extremely capable two-man teams that go into places for long periods of time, completely sustainable. And then a 10-man team, uh, that's, uh, that would be a, the Special Forces a Green Beret A team, where you have specialists of every type. They're also, they also need to sustain themselves for long periods of time and have delicate missions. And then the Army Rangers are, are uh, force on force, massive groups of 40 men going in with high uh, uh, firepower, um, incredibly trained to uh, withstand all kinds of, wow. of uh, missions. And usually they get the worst missions, like wow. scaling the cliffs of Point de Hoc uh, in uh, Normandy in World War II. Wow. And then the Marines recently, uh, as of the last few years or decade, they have now have their own uh, special forces called the Marine Special Operations Forces, or MARSOC. And Air Force, not to be outdone, uh, they don't have um, they don't have a ground unit because it's not their mission. But they have uh, uh, Air Force para rescue, and uh, they're all great. And I mention that because they're all in the book in in one form or another. Because it is typical that folks uh, will morph from one to the other. So you're an Army Ranger, uh, but uh, typically after a couple of deployments, and a lot of soldiers I served with uh, have, they've gone on to be. Uh, Green Berets or Delta, uh, okay. and so it's great. So we love Navy SEALs, uh, we love Jocko and uh, and Admiral McRaven, 
they 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 both make an appearance in the book uh and uh the mission is is just a little bit different but with t today's technology i mean it used to be the army rangers would be on land for land warfare and the navy seals some type of seaborne operation but the lines have gotten blurred and i guess a lot of time i'm sorry a lot of times yeah. you coordinate too amongst uh, the, the various uh, groups too, because if you have a mission or whatever it is that you, you know, have a coordinated, you know, uh, objective or whatever going on there. Hey, you, you said it. Uh, there are many missions that have at least two of those units, sometimes three. And you'll read, you know, in the book, uh, I bring uh, stories. I think that people like to learn, not by anyone um, uh, telling them prescriptively some lesson uh, or didactically, this is what you should do. No right. one wants to know that. Right. But you, t you bring a story and uh, it really resonates. For instance, uh, on one of the, uh, in Iraq and one of the high value targets in the book, you'll see the, the Army Ranger unit and the Navy SEALs. And they're both out there uh, for a 30 day patrol uh, and, and amazing. crossing the mountain. Uh, so yes, I, they so do I, stuff together. I can't wait to, to, to read it, to, to hear the story. I, I agree with you, Joe. It's a storytelling is a very powerful way of uh, transmitting and conveying um, you know, these, these, these things that these ideas and principles that, that you're probably going to tell us more about as we go along here. So what, what inspired you to, to, to write the book? What was, the, what was the impetus to put you over the edge and get you to pen, pen the paper there? Well, about 30 years ago, I had the fun of doing what sometimes in the army they call the 60 uh, day emotional experience. And that's uh, ranger school. Uh, I knew that when I was uh, getting ready to serve my uh, the time that I committed to uh, after college, I uh, was an ROTC, I had a, a commission. I thought uh, that if I'm doing four years, I want to do the most, the most difficult stuff I can possibly do because I know I'm never going to get an experience like that. And I've heard it was so vaunted and so mystical. I wanted to know if I could do it. So I, uh, I went to ranger school and that was uh, easily the, the hardest 58 days of my life. Uh, where you get uh, generally two hours of sleep a night and one meal. And it really breaks the body down. And, and, and ranger school is listed as a leadership slash survival school. Those two things together. That's an interesting combination. It's right. a leadership school. And it's just to get you to the point where you're, you're learning, they have to break you down to mm -hmm. when you can barely stand, walk, you're cut, you're bleeding, you're chafed, you know, everything. Right. And um, you're, you're literally like a zombie. And that's when the missions start. That's when you're evaluated as a leader. And wow. they really purport to make conditions worse there than they would be in actual combat. And, may, and, and of course, you know this, in those schools, Navy SEALs, uh, Army Ranger and the like, they don't care that you, that if you fail, they, they don't. In fact, we were convinced that they didn't care if we lived or died. Uh, <laughs> my, my ranger school class started 420 people, and there was five enormous platoons on, in the very first week called City Week. Uh, and then it, it, by the first phase, two weeks, the 420 was down in half. It was down to 200. Wow. And then 120 graduated and hung in there uh, the, the, the last seven weeks. So only the folks that meet the standard are... Uh, are going to pass and you know there's a certain kind of individual that just wants to see if you can do it and and once you do it um it's just the beginning because when you get that ranger tab if you graduate after 60 days you get this little tab that that on a safety pin that your aren't that your ranger buddy sticks in your on your shoulder and of course then you wear it on your uniform and for the next 10 years of your career everyone sees that and expects a different level so now they expect that that tony is a man who is going to motivate them, who, who believes in them, has, a, has had this cathartic experience, is going to share that. And it's a heck of a responsibility. So we went to, uh, we went to war, uh, to Iraq, and I served with so many amazing uh, soldiers and realized these things uh, should be shared with everybody. Now, the question is, why did it take me 30 years to do it? I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> I was going to get to that. I was going to say, well, <laughs> it, it sounds like you, you, you have an amazing story to tell, and you, and you told me why you, you started. But what kind of drew you to this point in time in your life that you felt the story, you felt compelled to tell the story now and actually release it to the public? 
Well, I think when, when you go through uh, an experience, you're not sure if it's going to be as meaningful to everyone else as it was to you. Okay. And then you realize that as the years go by, the impact right. stays absolutely as powerful. Now, what, uh, what really doubled down for me was that uh, many of my soldiers that I served with, continue, they stayed in. And believe it or not, they stayed in a full, a full 20 year career. And then even after that, are, are doing things like contracting. And so uh, two of the very last interviews I had when I, I was in Tel Aviv uh, uh, about six months ago, I was uh, interviewing folks that were in the same time zone that were, that were still in Iraq and Afghanistan. So it really was, it's more like a 30 year case study because the stories start just in, uh, in Vietnam, not that I was in Vietnam, but my mentor, my colonel, was in Vietnam, right. all the way through our generation, which was Iraq first time around, and these guys ha are in. So uh, the story spans uh, uh, about four decades, and that's, you find it that, that, yeah, that's still happening. That's that's amazing. And I heard as I'm listening to you, I'm hearing words about brotherhood and and leadership, and like that gets me to my really my next question is, you know, what's this book about? But more importantly. Who you who do you recommend? Obviously, uh, like probably want everyone to read it and, and uh, the curiosity and it touches so many things that touches all our lives. But what can you tell us a little bit more about the principles and some of the things you're trying to convey, the messaging in it, and and then who who would you recommend it to? Well, I love that question that you ask, you know, what's the target audience? I mean, when you write a book, if you write a science fantasy book, you're going to get folks that, you know, love cool stuff like that. And uh, I first thought that the target audience with this because a uh, book, because it has principles and leadership lessons specifically targeted for people age 20 to 40 that are, that are engaged in high performance athletics or, or, uh, or, or business athletes. That's kind of a cool term that they're, corporations are using right now a business mm. athlete in fact i love it it's, it's it, it really em embodies a lot of the things that folks are trying to, to, to do sure. out there uh and so young in other words young leaders and i just threw a, name, a number down there 20 to 40 um it is really targeted to folks that are that, that uh, may have come out of the military or uh, specifically have never been in the military and and they but but they embrace that i mean everybody loves uh, uh loves watching movies and they love playing call of duty and they <laughs> love the mystical magic of it but minus the gunfire <laughs> and the hunger that it takes to figure this stuff out why not why not read these stories so 20 to 40 young business and that's what i thought uh, of course anyone who's in the ever been in the military or loves military would, would like it but here was the shocker the book uh it gets we we send that to a, a group of ladies that were, uh, I, I think, I think I'm not going to get in trouble if they're if they're listening to this, saying they were over 40. Okay. I think that's that, that's safe group. We're good. So they're, they're, I think we're good. I, think, <laughs> I would guess, I would have guessed that that would be the least popular demographic to read a book like this. That's you know lessons and and and, and business stuff and and a lot of military stuff and where it comes from. And they shocked me because this group loved it. And the reason why, one of the ladies pointed out that. She uh, was totally surprised that the word love appeared in this book. And, and there were so many stories that, that were about love. And I thought, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, and then I did that little search on Google. And I saw that it, the word love appears 65 times in this book. And it's wow. that brotherhood you talked about before. And, and they love the story. In particular, there's a story of, of, one, of the, one of the soldier's moms uh, who comes to grips with uh, the death of her son and uh, that the positive direction that she takes it in helping so many lives or she has over the last 10 years and uh, and the love between brothers as Shakespeare wrote 500 years ago uh, that there, there's no bond like uh, men who have shed blood together and that 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 it's amazing when you think about it, you, you know, you're thinking, Oh, I'm talking, I'm talking about the military. I'm talking about, you know, um, things that necessarily evoke the word love, but, mm. um, and, and I'm a big proponent of this, of love, compassion, empathy in the world. And so much that I've found out, uh, through my, my journey and how 
how important it is. Um, and, and not only the love, but the giving back of love and, and part, I, a little bit about what I guess prompted me to write my book was, it was that same thing, like, you know, showing that love back to, you know, what I've been through and what, and how I want to help others. And if they get something out of the book, whatever it is, right. If they take a little piece out of it and I'm hearing the same thing from you, I mean, you could, you know, it, it, it isn't a 20 to 40. It's a, it's a 10 to 70 or whatever, yeah. you know, infinite. Um, do you like love? Are, do you, yeah, right. are you for love? If you're right. for love, yeah. Right. Right. You know, so you can read the message. book. Right. And you'll, <laughs> and, and, and it's amazing what people take away from that. And like you said, your brother, the, the brotherhood that you formed and on all the relationships along the way, whether they be teacher or student, um, those are all, there's lessons like, many lessons within lessons oh, in yeah. there it's it's great and i really think that like as as in your book you tell a story um and you don't have to tell them this is the story this is the principle i want you to know you just start writing i want you to know that i i got on my bike one morning and i went for a ride like any other day and this is what happened and after this terrible thing happened this is the place I had to be in and pick myself up. And, and man, they get that story. So yeah. uh, I was, uh, I, I had went through this process of interviewing uh, about 50 uh, army Rangers and I say interviewing them. Um, this book is not about me. I, this is not a personal memoir and, and it's not, it's not my story, uh, but I do happen to be in the middle of it all because uh, it was G man and Jimmy and bull and, you know, and, and Sergeant Patton, they were all, they're all, my, you know, my folks. Um, I, I had the pleasure to command many of them. I served alongside as a colleague with them, uh, with others. And uh, it, I'm just sort of the glue in the middle and I connect the stories. And the interview was in a lot of times going back and, uh, and just capturing um, what we did, uh, what they did uh, years ago and uh, what it's meant to them now. And what a, what a catharsis that, that, that has been. I'm sure. I'm sure it had to be, it had to be fun to hear some of the reactions and, 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 and just feel that, I guess when you, when you actually uh, get the feedback is really kind of cool when people read it. Um, it's amazing to this day when people read it, it'll they'll just smile at me sometimes and go, wow. And that, that alone is enough. You know, that gets me, that makes me feel very satisfied. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you, uh, Joe. I really am because I, I think it's um, it's 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 just wonderful for everyone to hear these stories and and share these share these lessons. So I so you, I, I I heard a lot of those words again: the brotherhood, the love, uh, the relationships, leadership. Um, is there any like key takeaways that when you now that you've written the book that you that you find that you've kind of, kind of, kind of categorize a little bit key takeaways from the book? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, I think that uh, one of the things that the, uh, the Rangers themselves in the stories found out and thereby, therefore the reader is going to find out is that uh, limitations uh, aren't what, what you think they are. And everyone says in some form or fashion, you know, you're not limited by anything. You can do anything. Uh, and those sound like, interesting words and most people never kind of figure it out but then when they when they send you to ranger school or they send you to combat or uh, the freezing mountains of afghanistan or or these these awful mind roads uh, of, uh in iraq that you have to traverse all the time uh, you push past limits that that you didn't know you could and the key thing is that you were sure that that was a limit you were sure that you could only run a a, a five minute mile uh, if you had to, but then, uh, then given the right impetus, you, you push past that. You were sure that you would drown in the swamp, uh, at four in the morning, uh, because you haven't slept in two days and you're in chest high water and it's, it's dark and there might be alligators. Uh, but seeing the man right in front of you, uh, makes you realize that, okay, if one other human being is doing this, then, then I, I think I can do it too. And there's this group ability to, to, uh, to rise above and do more than you ever thought you could. 
So I think a lot of people will see that. And I also think that uh, some people uh, will uh, realize that uh, love makes the world go round in the strangest of places. And um, when, you're, when you're cold and when you're hungry and when you are uh, bandaging up your, your, your buddy uh, and all you're caring about is, is you know, saving them when you're exposing yourself to gunfire or whatever, uh, that, uh, that, that love's a powerful tool. And people will get it. It's funny. It's funny when you said survival and when you're pushed to that limit of survival and drawing a little bit of a parallel between me, your story and my story a little bit, Joe, is when you reach that point when you're just in survival mode, (laughs) it unleashes some things in that you're not always expecting, but there's some wonderful gifts in those things that at the time you're going through them are very, 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 very difficult. But once you walk away from it and after you've experienced it, and I don't know how you feel, maybe you could tell me how you feel too, but you feel very liberated in yourself that yes, you hit the wall. Yes. It was very (laughs) probably the worst thing that you've experienced in your life. However, it was the most beautiful thing in your life at the same time. And I know that, that's hard to grasp for readers and people sometimes. Do you, do you sense any of that too? I you- sure do. I think that uh, when you do something really super hard or super stressful, it's a galvanizing experience. And to some extent, you were one person uh, before that. And to a large extent, you are reborn after, afterwards. Wow. And uh, a lot of people are reborn for the good. And uh, you asked a question, you know, why, do, why am I writing this or why am I doing it now? Why am I doing it at all? Is to take that galvanizing experience and put it to the good. And what I found was that at least with 50 of the greatest soldiers that I've ever served with and families, uh, that, um, that it's, it started to do a, a good right, you know, right uh, from there. And I think, it, I, think it's gonna, uh, I think it's gonna resonate with a lot of people. I can't tell you. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm getting there. You're building momentum in me here to to go out and and, and, and purchase this book. And we'll get to that in a minute. But one more question. And, and this one was one we kind of discussed a little bit beforehand. And, and it's my favorite is what have you learned about yourself after now reflecting back on this journey and what I guess really has it drawn up into you as far as learning about more about yourself, if anything, maybe, maybe you haven't, but I, I suspect you have. Well, it's important to remember things that have happened, to relive the good things, to, to pull out the, the good uh, attributes of, of a tough situation. And everybody knows that, you know, that, that uh, a war is generally a terrible thing. And, uh, and, and it's always going to be um, a, a sacrifice of good men and brothers and sons and so forth. Uh, but if we let it go at that, we're not, we're not serving it uh, justice. We've got to pull out the, the things that really um, can be learned from this crucible, this leadership opportunity forged in fire. And, uh, and that I learned that, that people you know, need and want to see that. You now, selfishly, I, I, would I gain for myself? I, I believe I gain more out of it. Uh, because bringing that catharsis uh, to to so many folks that I talk to uh, has been an amazing feeling for me. It, uh, um, do you feel like a lot of good? Excuse me. Do you feel like you're telling their story too, Joe? Well, I really am. I mean, if you see in the book, uh, each of the leadership principles, like walking the walk, that's a story where you're going to get to know Sergeant James uh, Jimmy Patton. And when you you know creating a persona, I mean, these are things you should do in life. If you can do, you're going to learn about. You're going to learn about G-Man and then Bull and, you know, and, and Sergeant Major. And um, so it's their stories and their principles. And they've, uh, they've, they've really just uh, come wow. alive again, uh, telling the story. And then what I got out of it, I mean, this beautiful catharsis. I got invited to Tennessee to go uh, to the, the home of, of the Pattons. Uh, I wanted to talk to um, mom and dad of, uh, of, of uh, Staff Sergeant Jimmy Patton who died just about 10 years ago in Iraq on a very high profile mission. And uh, we spent uh, a day 
uh, there talking and sitting around the table and, and Sheila, uh, mom, uh, made lasagna because she knows I'm Italian from Philadelphia and here in Tennessee and, uh, and, uh, and you know, the, the, the afternoon turned into the night. It's a sweet tea turned into a, turned into a wine with dinner and then a beer as we talked long into the night. And at the end of the night, uh, because they knew I was out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, of course, she, she fixed a bed for me uh, in the back bedroom in, in Jimmy's room. And uh, I spent the night there. And wow. she said that her husband, Greg, hadn't really talked and opened up and just talked freely uh, ever uh, in the 10 wow. years that, since Jimmy passed. So wow. that's a gift to me as the writer. I mean, I feel like I got so much more out of it than I'm giving. That that's fulfillment. Mm. Uh, that's the word I always bring into focus is the fulfillment of not only telling story, but your love towards your brothers. And, and that, that's amazing. That, that, that just, wow. That's very powerful, my friend, very powerful. What you just said to, to do that. So I, 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 Boy, to honor those men and those people is, is what a better way to, to, to honor them by telling the story about them. So that's I, exactly right. So I, this is good. And I, I know we're running out of time. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm happy to be here today. Thank uh, you. We're, we're going to stay in touch. I know that. Um, what else we got? Be, no, not, not. Well, the most important part is can you tell us <laughs> where and when we could purchase the book? Because uh, I want to be the first in line. Well, I'm happy to tell you, and it's going to be an easy date to remember. Veterans Day is November 11th. So we're, we got plenty, we got some time now. Uh, Veterans Day, uh, November 11th is the Kindle uh, release, uh, the ebook release, and then paperback's coming out in March. Uh, I'm happy to tell you that, uh, although I thought this might be a smaller project, it, it did get picked up. Uh, Dudley Court Press is the publisher and got picked up by, uh, by a big uh, distribution house. So it's going to be available in bookstores and wow. uh, all kinds of cool places. Definitely Amazon. It's already, it already uh, started to appear on Amazon for pre-sales uh, last. So you can find it if you, you type in Guts, Smarts, and Love. And uh, it's going to be exciting. We're going to be talking about it around different places. I can't wait to get around to talk to audiences uh, uh, that uh, are, are super excited to hear the stories. Well, I, 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 can't, wait, I can't wait to, 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 to read it and experience um, some of these things that you've spoke about in just this past half hour, uh, gut smarts and, and love, live your life the army way. I, I, I love the title. I, I, I love the story and I really look forward to it, Joe. I want to thank you for, for joining me today and, and sharing these little bit, little tidbits or teasers, uh, regarding, uh, the book. Once again, thank you very much. Well, Tony, thanks for having me on, and uh, we'll be in touch. I'd uh, love to come back and chat with your audience anytime, and uh, you're a good man and a good friend, and, and uh, your story is, is part of the inspiration uh, that uh, I had, I kept with me over the last couple of years when I was writing as well. Oh, God, I'm honored by you even saying that, Joe. Thank you very much, my friend. Take care. Thank you, Tony. Rangers lead the way. <laughs>